Welcome to another reading Reddit live stream highlights video. Today's video, we're going to be reading some best of Redditor updates. We've got three really juicy stories that I found that I'm super excited to read for you guys and for chat. First one, we got new updates. My little brother, three male, is actually my fiance's kid, 25 male. Mother-in-law deliberately infected my daughter with chicken pox. I'm livid. She doesn't think it's a big deal. That has to be a crime, bro. And then finally, we have my husband husband cheated and gave me an STD while I'm currently pregnant. And there is a new update on that one. Guys, make sure if you enjoy the video to subscribe on YouTube or Apple Podcasts or follow if you're on Spotify. And as always, if you guys would like to be a part of the Reddit reads, make sure to follow me twitch.tv slash by Sarby. I stream at least twice a week. My little brother is actually my fiance's kid. New updates. Original post June 30th, 2024. Yes, the title is effed up. I'm aware. My fiance and myself have been together since we were 17 and 18 years old. We have a 25 male fiance and a 24 female OP. Honestly, he was always kind, handsome, funny, and everyone used to say I was so lucky to have the whole package. I felt lucky too. He always treated me with love and respect, so this makes everything just so shocking for me. I have always had a good relationship with my mom. It has always been her and I against the world. My dad died in an accident when I was little. We always joked we are the real life Rory and Lorelai from the Gilmore Girls. My mom dated guys on and off, and they were usually cool, but nothing really past the early stages. Around four years ago, my mom told me she was pregnant, which was a huge surprise. My mom was around 42 years old, and although she was sort of dating someone recently, didn't meet the guy, but knew she went on dates. It still was a big shock. She never thought she could be pregnant at her age. She had me when she was super young and oopsie. And I can tell she was stressed and worried. I decided to support her since she has always supported me and tried to reassure her. She then had my brother who is now three years old. I have a close relationship with my brother. I've helped take care of him since he was born and I just love the little guy. My fiance was also always helpful with my brother. We would take him out for ice cream, playground, pool time during summer, etc. But nothing was weird. He was just my then boyfriend spending time with my brother and I. Now to how I found out. My fiance and I lived together since we finished college. My fiance was not at home since he was hanging out with friends, but I was home because I didn't feel like going out and just wanted to chill on my sofa. At some point during binge watching a series on Netflix, my laptop died and I was too lazy to go get my charger. So I just took my fiance's iPad. I know the password, but honestly never used it before. The iPad logged in and I got a bunch of messages pinging. I guess he hasn't used it in a while too. Anyways, it's got my attention and I went to check it out and of course I found everything. My mom's number wasn't under her name, but I recognized the number and verified it with my phone. She was telling him she felt guilty and that I should know. He said he also felt guilty but couldn't lose me and they fucked it up. She said it was unfair for my brother to never not know his dad and that if he could live having his son around not behaving like a dad but a brother-in-law. I broke down. What the actual fuck? There weren't a lot of older messages, just some photos stored of my brother as a newborn, my mom pregnant, and more photos of my brother growing up in an album. I couldn't take it anymore. I cried for what seemed like ages and I waited for my boyfriend to come back home. I wish I was one of those women who can pretend and get things together before confronting the cheater, but I can't. He came back later that night around 11.30 p.m. and I just gave him the iPad with the conversation opened and saw his face go completely pale. I asked for an explanation, when, how, why, and he didn't want to at first, but he knew he had to. Apparently a few years back while I was traveling with some friends, girls trip, my fiance and mom had dinner together. This isn't strange since he has been a part of the family for so long. Sometimes mom and fiance would eat together at our place even if I was busy with sports or out. I did the same with his parents. Somehow, unclear how since he couldn't explain it well, one thing led to another and they ended up sleeping together. They felt guilty but apparently not guilty enough because they slept together two to three more times using the excuse of meeting up to discuss how to tell me. Apparently, when my mom got pregnant, they stopped sleeping together and decided not to tell me, since my fiance loved me and couldn't lose me. My mom didn't want to lose her daughter. So here we are now with two of the most disgusting humans. I obviously broke the engagement, told my mom to never talk to me again, and moved in with a friend. I feel bad for my brother since I really love him, but I can't be around him now. I just can't. I feel like it would remind me of all those times we talked about having kids. I would be his baby mama, only baby mama. 
We talked about this future since we were 17 years old. So I want to puke every time I think how I was actually taking care of his child with someone else while still having those dreams. I want to puke. Editor's note, comments were mostly supportive with a few telling their own stories of cutting parents off and a couple with tales of spouses sleeping with parents. How is this even a thing? People be crazy. Cheating on someone is something, but cheating on someone with their parent is just diabolical just evil bro also the fact that they let it get that far like you should if you were going to take that baby to term you should have let her know like as soon as you knew that you were pregnant bro that is that's messed up it's honestly the most messed up to lie to her for three years, bro. He really wanted to live this Stacy's mom fantasy. Look where that got him. Oh my God. It's disgusting to think that not only your partner can betray you like that, but then your mom could betray you like that. It's creepy since the mom has known the fiance since they were young teens. Doesn't abdicate the fiance of responsibility, but still. That's a good point, gender ghost. She low-key could have been grooming him for like multiple years. First update, four days later on July 4th, 2024. As I was afraid, I was indeed confronted near my office this week. I knew this was was coming but thought maybe i had more time my ex was the person to come find me yesterday wednesday after finishing work and walking to where my car was parked my ex was sort of lingering waiting around i thought about running not gonna lie but i guess in the moment i felt strong enough to get over with it instead of having that hanging above my head waiting to be approached again he asked if we could talk and i said yes but I didn't feel like having that conversation over coffee like we were old friends. It felt ridiculous. So I told him to just talk right there. We were in the streets, but somehow it wasn't crowded, but also not completely lonely. Felt right. He basically said sorry a hundred times and that I deserve better. I agree. He said he did love me and that he still does, but he would understand why I wouldn't want anything to do with him. He said that if I did in fact consider giving him a chance that he would go to therapy alone or together or both and that he would work hard to win my trust back. I told him it wasn't possible. There was too much damage. This sounds calm when I type it, but in the moment, things came out more with louder tone and harsher words. Anyways, he did say that he is in the, or will be, it was a bit of a blur, process of getting custody, partly, of my brother, and that he in fact does want to be a dad to him. He said he does not want to be together with my mom, that it was just a stupid mistake. Sure, because four to five times mistake is just a random thing. He couldn't explain why he did it in the first place. I think he doesn't even know himself. I asked if he cheated with someone else before. He said no. Not sure if to believe it, but he sounded honest. I wouldn't believe that. If you're able to cheat on someone with their mother, there's no way that you haven't cheated on them just in general. I would not trust that person. I asked why he didn't come clean and he said that after he did the deed, he always felt panicked and it hits him that he could lose me and he just didn't want to. I told him it was meant to be found out and asked what was his plan, to have my brother around and ignore their relationship forever? He said he didn't think far enough and that he was basically going with the idea one day at a time type of survival. I asked him if he felt that my mom seduced him. He said it was mutual, which made me want to puke again. I asked if he had any contact with my mom since I found out. He said yes, but mostly about my brother, didn't elaborate more, and I didn't press for more info on that. He said he told his parents the day before or the day before that, not sure, Monday to Tuesday, about everything. The parents were not happy, but they are glad to start building now a relationship with my brother, their grandkid. Honestly, all this felt like a punch in my stomach. I don't know why. His parents wanted to contact me, but he told them to wait till he approached me first, hence why he was there. I said if he started or thought about the custody before I found out, and he said no. But when I found out, it was like the push he needed. Great. Seems like I helped him get his shit together. Ugh. And this past week, he was arranging all of that mess. That's why he hasn't tried to see me before. He sounded and looked defeated, but the whole thing made me, besides sad, angry. I was mainly depressed before, but now I'm furious. I feel like he's still in an okay place and he isn't paying for his actions beyond me leaving him. He will have my brother, his parents, and others and move on with his life while I lost everything. I hate him. We parted ways, not on a happy note, and I told him to never get near me again. I was done. He asked me to see my brother still, that I was important to him and tried to guilt trip me and it worked, but I still think I can't. I don't know much about my mom and really hope she doesn't come find me anytime soon because I'm fuming right now. 
and won't be able to handle it. I will be contacting my family and friends and finally doing the blasting today. I think it is about time and after my talk with him, I got the extra push I needed. Editor's note, top comment suggested moving to Australia. Can't fault that line of thinking. I'm a big fan of like, if you go through something fucking tragic or just like life altering, it's always a great move to change your location, change your scenery. Cause like, it's just like a fresh start. And by God, does this person need a fresh start? I definitely recommend going going somewhere else far away from this absolute fuckery. <laughs> Ooh, Cree, I question if he got a paternity test confirmed. That's actually a good point. Update to July 7th, 2024, three days from last post, seven from the original post. I did the blasting and this is how it went down. I first posted on my family's Facebook group we share. This is from my mom's family side. I used inspiration of what you all suggested in my last post and said something around the lines of, I want to communicate to you all that my wedding with X has been permanently canceled since I found out that my mom name and my ex name had in the last few years, a sexual relationship, which resulted in the birth of my little brother name. I had no clue of any of this and I found out about it last week. Moving forward, I won't have a relationship with name, mom and X name for obvious reasons. I would appreciate your understanding and I felt it was only fair to let you know of the situation since I value transparency transparency and honesty above all. What a well-crafted paragraph, but what an absolute nuclear bomb in the family group chat. I also included a screenshot of my mother's message, what I said to her once I found out, and a message she managed to write back before I blocked her. Didn't open the message till before the blasting. I didn't want to hear slash read her and be persuaded. It exploded. I had family reaching out via text and calling the whole day after the blasting. I would say most were very supportive and I could tell they were just shocked. There were a few neutral and some suspicious that it wasn't the whole story and maybe I misunderstood. How the fuck do you misunderstand that? In what world is there a misunderstanding around my fiance slept with my mom and they had a kid that I've been taking care of for the past three years of its goddamn life? That's actually fucking insane. If someone sent me that, I would be like, that's crazy. You're blocked. <laughs> my grandparents were in the maybe you misunderstood category, which it wasn't surprising since my mom is super close to my grandparents. And like I said before, my mom was always a good mom. So no red flags. I will be moving with a cousin that is more like a sister to me. I haven't reached out to her previously because I knew once she knows everyone would. That's why I went to my friend's place. My cousin is devastated on my behalf and offered I live with her and her two kids until I can get my feet on the ground. I accepted and will be moving next week. I'm a bit afraid this will give my mom an easier access to me, but I can't stay at my friend's place forever. I wish they would elaborate on this. Like, how is it easier access? I mean, I think you should establish with this cousin before you move in. Like, hey, if I move in, that means my mom is not allowed on the premises ever. I then proceed quickly to post a similar message for my we share most of our friends since high school and local university friends on Instagram I created a close friend story and tagged most of them too this went sort of viral in our friend group actually one of my friends sent me my reddit post and asked if this was me I confirmed they were also shocked and speechless they never thought my ex would even remotely do anything like this they said he was crazy about you oh well Apparently, he went overboard on the crazy part. The group of friends is divided at the moment. Some are completely on my side. Some are thinking it isn't the whole truth. I told everyone that reached out that if they don't believe me to ask their friend if he's asking for custody of my little brother. That kind of shut them up for now. My ex deleted his social media, apparently. I don't know. I'm just a firm believer of like standing your ground. Like, bro, if this if this came out and it's finally exposed, like own up to it. Be a fucking man. I just I feel bad for that fucking kid, bro. Sammy said he was so crazy about her. He decided to dip into the womb she came from. Get you a man who's so obsessed with you. He wants to be in the womb you spent nine months in. If he's not willing to do that, he doesn't actually want you, queen. <laughs> Also, my ex's parents called me like I guess they would. They were kind to me and very sorry about everything. I got the feeling they are also overwhelmed and very disappointed. However, it was clear they will be supporting their son. They were very upset at my mother and don't want anything to do with her, but not sure how it will work with my little brother and everything else. They tried to give me info about the custody and what is my ex up to now, but I shut that down quickly and told them I don't want any info. I want to move on. I also asked them to not reach out in the near future that I need a distance, especially if they will be supporting my ex. He is living with his parents at the moment. Also, my ex and my mother after the blast were going nuts trying to reach out to me. They tried calling my friend who she blocked them and reached out from different numbers. I had to put my phone on silence and ignore everyone. 
However, my mother sent me a long text from another number, and that was a weird text. She said I was being cruel and that she didn't think she raised me that way. She said she thought we... <laughs> I didn't think I raised you to stand up for yourself when you were disrespected in probably the worst way possible by the two most important people in your life. I didn't think I raised you that way. Like, what the... Fuck? She said she thought we had a better relationship than me blasting out laundry like that without talking to her first, that I didn't have the whole picture. She did mention something that confused me. She said in her long ass text, the reason she slept with my ex is because he reminded her of my dad, that it was grief, that she didn't mean to use him to heal her pain, but she wasn't strong enough. I don't even know what that means. Like, did she think that my ex looks physically like my dad or personality or what? I have seen photos of my dad and well, yeah, my ex isn't super different, but also not super alike. I mean, they share brown slash dirty blonde hair, blue eyes, white skin, but that's not so uncommon. I don't see what else. I don't know. That threw me for a loop and honestly makes me want to confront my mom just to know what the hell. From all the things she could say, I was not expecting that. Okay, yes, that is a really fucking weird thing to say, but also, like, that's still not a justification. Oh, no, like, I slept with him because he reminded me of your dad, and, like, I was just so grief-stricken. Oh, shit, well, if that's the case, it's okay. Like, is that how she thought it was gonna play out in her head? Is that... <laughs> I'm holding on better. I don't cry every hour or want to murder them, but I'm still sad and upset and it just feels like it isn't my life. That it's a big joke or a bad dream and I'll wake up to my normal life. I also need to really start planning my future and start applying for jobs in other cities or maybe check the possibilities abroad more seriously. I might ask for two to three days off work and really get my thoughts together and do some research. I'm terrified, to be honest. I feel frozen, but I know I need to start moving. Loki, feel bad for the kid. Imagine how he'll feel when he's older and finds out he was created. That kid's gonna need some serious therapy. To know that you have a sister out there that wants nothing to do with you because her your parents fucked up, that would kill me. Knowing how great my relationships are with my siblings, like that would actually fucking kill me. Newest up dates august 2nd 2024 26 days from the last post 33 from the original post my group of friends is divided some of his closest friends have been saying that i should give him another chance that no one is perfect but he loves me that he was always good to me and i shouldn't just turn my back on him they even said that max little brother and i could be a perfect little family and that i could make sure that my little brother has good stepmom who better than his blood relative right this is so bullshit. They are talking like he messed up on something minor or even medium. Like he lied about getting laid off of work or like he forgot to pay our bills for a month. Like what the fuck? I have some girlfriends that are completely on my side and supporting me, which is nice, but our friend group isn't solid anymore and everyone is taking sides. I did not have a conversation with Max on the phone though. I admit I had a bit to drink that night since I was coming back from meeting some friends for dinner and I had a few glasses of wine and a cocktail, but I remember the talk. Disclaimer, this is not the exact conversation, but I will put what I remember to the best of my abilities. Me, do you think you were groomed? Max, I never thought of that, but maybe? Me, how did you even get a crush on my mom? I thought we always hung out in a group and my mom wasn't really there for more than a minute and passing by. Was it looks? Max, yes and no. I thought she was pretty and therefore the teen crush. But I then also tried to talk to her by passing through your house and ask if you were there. You knew I wasn't and then had a chat with your mom. Me, was I always second choice? Max, no, you aren't now. Me, and back then, when you asked me to be your girlfriend. Max, silence. Me, tell me the truth, please. Max, I don't know. I did like you, but I still had the crush. Me, do you want to be with her now? Max, God, no. Me, why did you do it, Max? Get her out of your system? So you still wanted her? Did you want her during the times we had sex? Max, no, I don't. I only wanted you. I don't know. I feel like those YOLO moments. I thought I would give my teen self what he always wanted. I felt so stupid. Me, then why did you do it more times? Max, I really don't know. This is just a stupid conversation. I don't know how the inner workings of my brain work. I saw a chance to get dick wet and I went and dick wet. We were silent a lot and not long after we hung up, it was a short call and honestly emotional. I was sort of drunk-ish and he seemed emotionally drained too. I feel stupid for opening up and calling him and and asking those questions. I said a thousand times I don't want to know more, but I was weak. Every time I feel like moving on, I get hit again by everything my brain can't understand yet. On the mom front, well, not a lot has happened. She continues to try to fix it. My grandparents reached out to me, but I didn't answer. I'm sure they were trying to give me support. Another short, quote unquote, update here, August 18th, 2024, 16 days from the last post, 49 from the original post. Hi everyone, so I'm finally here with an update and a good one at that. I'm moving to Spain. 
I got the job as an au pair near one of the biggest cities in Spain. I'm so excited. I'm flying in a few days and starting the 1st of September with the family. The kids are adorable too. I will be learning Spanish too, which I always wanted to do anyways, so it all feels like heaven sent. I haven't told almost anyone about it, just a few friends I trust and of course my cousin who I live with, also my boss. My mother has been telling people I'm being mean to her when she wants to fix everything. She made a mistake and is trying to fix it, but I'm being difficult. She is just human, not surprising. I'm now really coming to terms on how self-centered she is and has always been. I'm sad I lost the mom I thought I had. Feels like if she died, my new therapist, yes, I got one last week, yay, said I'm grieving. Max has left me a bit alone since the last call we had. I heard he is focusing on my little brother and just staying under the radar. I have had some short phone calls with my little brother, which has been bittersweet, but he is doing okay. He, of course, doesn't know what's really happening, but he is happy with having a new dad. It doesn't hurt as much as it did before, but it still hurts. I think OP is making all the right moves here. If anything, I just don't understand why she isn't blocking the mom. I just have this like mindset whenever you're going through like a breakup or something hard, like out of sight, out of mind is the best way to go about it. If you follow your ex on social media and you just see all their stories and everything like that, like you're not giving yourself the opportunity to not see them and not think about them. Like when you see those things, you're just going to start thinking about them. So like kind of same thing here. I would just completely cut off the ex, completely cut off the mom because like the way that you're gonna get over it is obviously through therapy and stuff like that but also just like giving yourself the least amount of opportunities to actually like think about that thing and feel sad about that thing mother-in-law deliberately infected my daughter with chicken pox i'm livid she doesn't think it's a big deal uh, we got a 56 female mother-in-law 27 female op and a one female daughter original post december 29th 2015 earlier this year my husband 31 male and i decided to spend christmas with his family for the first time since my daughter was born last september since they live 12 hours away we decided to stay for a few weeks before christmas so they could spend loads of time with Annie. We arrived early like we planned and everything was great. I've had a few disagreements with my mother-in-law, Trish, in the past over my parenting style. She criticized me for using disposable diapers, buying baby food from the supermarket, and not raising Annie as an organic baby. But everything seemed great. Hold on, chat. There's such thing as reusable diapers? No fucking way. Hold on, hold on. There's no way that's sanitary. Are you fucking for real right now? So what, you like your baby just shits in them and then you throw them in the washing machine? That sounds disgusting, chat. You put them in the... Ugh. Ugh. That sounds so fucking gross, bro. There's pads too. Pads make sense to me. Pads makes way more sense to me than shit-filled diapers. But you flush the shit... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. What you are telling me right now, the operation here is you not only take the diaper off, but then you go over and you scrape the shit from the diaper into the toilet. That is easily the most disgusting thing I have ever heard. To me, that's like if you had reusable toilet paper. That's probably a fucking thing, isn't it? After a day or two settling in, my husband and I decided to pick up a few gifts from a mall around an hour away before the last minute rush kicked in. My father-in-law, 60 male, tagged along. Trish said she was happy to take care of Annie. We got back a few hours later and Annie was down for a nap on a blanket I didn't recognize. Trish said one of her friends dropped by and gave it as an early Christmas gift. It looked pretty old slash worn, but I figured one of her hippie friends was just recycling it. The next two weeks were fine, aside from Trish making a point to prepare meals for Annie from scratch. I mentioned this to my husband and he said to just let her be. Annie mostly mushed the food Trish gave her with her hands through the bowls on the floor as she's been doing at the moment. Trish said it would take her a while to get used to nutritious meals or you're just making her some nasty shit. I was getting sick of her meddling, but it was only for a few weeks. So for the sake of the holidays, I let it slide. The day after Christmas, Annie was really unsettled and wouldn't stop fidgeting and crying. I took her temperature and she had a fever. So I kept an eye on her for the next few days and it thankfully started to go down. This morning, she started to get a rash and blisters on her arms and legs, and I freaked out. I was packing a bag to drive to see a doctor when Trish asked where I was going. I told her Annie had a rash and I was taking her to see a doctor. She got a weird, smug smile on her face and told me there was nothing to worry about. When I asked her what she was talking about, she said without even looking at Annie that what she had was just chicken pox. I asked her how she could possibly know that, 
and she casually admitted one of her friend's grandkids had chicken pox a few weeks ago, so she asked them to wipe a blanket over the child's arms, legs, and face and bring it to her house. Who the fuck does that? Who the fuck first asks, but then who the fuck delivered? What the hell is going on? At this point, I couldn't believe what I was hearing, so I asked if the blanket was the gift Annie was sleeping on. She said it was. I lost my shit. To be honest, I don't really remember what I said because I was up most of the night for two days checking on Annie. I just unleashed on Trish asking what the fuck was wrong with her. My husband and father-in-law came to try to calm things down and Trish dug her heels in and said chicken pox was the best and most natural thing for Annie to build up her immunity. I already have a vaccination schedule in place with my pediatrician and she was booked in to get immunized for chicken pox at 18 months. We drove to see the doctor and he confirmed she had it. He said I'll have to cut Annie's nails short and might have to tape socks on her hands while she sleeps because kids so young can scratch until they bleed and that will leave scars. I'm just imagining a little baby with like sock hands. That's that's kind of fucking cute. No, don't get me wrong, not the right answer, but, but that's really fucking funny. On the drive back, my husband started making excuses for Trish that she was only doing what she thought was best. I couldn't believe he was defending her and we fought most of the way home until I told him to stop talking to me. Annie's been scratching like crazy and I just had to tape socks over her hands. Trish tried to talk to me when we got back and I told her to get out of my sight. We were meant to stay until Wednesday, but I just finished packing up our stuff so we can leave first thing in the morning. I'm so angry I can't even think. Whenever I hear Trish moving around in the kitchen, my heart starts beating faster and I feel like going out there and grabbing her by the hair. I don't ever want to see her again or let my daughter see her again. What can I say to make her and my husband realize the enormity of what she's done? I don't think I can speak coherently to their faces until Annie gets better. Hey man, if you want to do that with your own kid, that's perfectly fucking fine. But if it's not your kid, stay the hell away. If you're going to do something, ask them beforehand. It's funny, as mad as I am at the mother-in-law, I think I'm more mad at the husband. Like, how is the husband going to fucking justify this or try to defend the mother-in-law? Like, what a fucking shitty husband to not go at bat not only for his wife but also for his child i could never trust the husband after that because literally what the fuck that's what i'm saying caroline update february 2nd 2016 okay so a little over a month after the first post i didn't think it would be possible but things got worse I got up first thing the next morning and started packing our stuff into the car. Once I opened it up, I kept the keys in my pocket since I was going in and out. Usually we use Jack's set and leave mine in my bag. While I was packing, he sat in the kitchen with Trish and my father-in-law and chatted and had coffee like nothing was wrong. Annie was mercifully still sleeping, so I just gently belted her in and closed her door when Jack came out and asked if I had everything. I said we were good to go as soon as he was. He said, okay, and calmly took out his key set and centrally locked the car, locking Annie in. I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said he wouldn't be leaving until I apologized to Trish. I think I was stunned into silence because he then took the chance to rehash what he said the previous day, that Trish thought she was doing what was best, that chicken pox doesn't kill you, and that I was making a bigger deal out of this than I needed to and making Trish feel bad. Yes, making her feel bad. All the comments from my last post were swirling around in my head and I told him he needs to stop being a son and start being a father. He screwed up his face and said he would always be Trish's son and that was the point, that nobody should speak to his mother the way I had the day before and I needed to apologize to clear the air. Yeah, throw this whole fucking man away. Put him in the fucking garbage disposal. I felt like I had entered some kind of weird twilight zone where I had accidentally married a nine-year-old instead of an adult man. So I just asked him to open the car so we could leave. He repeatedly refused, then walked back inside and said he would see me in there when I was acting more reasonable. You can probably guess what happened next. I left my bag on the passenger seat so he'd probably assume my keys were in there. Nope, I waited 30 seconds, then just hopped into the car and drove away. My phone blew up with millions of calls from him, Trish, and my father-in-law. Eventually, my mom and dad and my sister Jess, who I'm super close with, called as well. I'd briefly texted Jess about what was happening the day before, but she was stunned to get the full blow by blow. By the time I was on the open road, I asked her to phone Jack and tell him he could walk home for all I care. Once she heard my side of the story and not Jack's, which was apparently that I had gone crazy, frightened Trish, snatched Annie, and sped away, she calmed way down. If this woman doesn't send this man divorce papers, I, I'm gonna throw a fucking fit. Mom, Dad, and Jess offered to start driving and meet me halfway so I could switch with one of them and wouldn't have to drive the full 12 hours by myself in one day. 
I was so grateful to see them, I pretty much broke down in a truck stop parking lot while I blubbered that I loved them. They all took turns driving while I had a rest. It was super reassuring to talk it over and hear that Trish and Jack are the unreasonable ones. Once we got back, I stayed at my parents overnight and they said I could stay as long as I needed. The next few days were fairly tense. I was up most of the night making sure Annie didn't scratch, which she did anyway somehow. And it seemed like she just cried and cried and cried until she was exhausted. She had five scars on her face and a few others on her arms from scratching. I know appearances shouldn't matter, but I'm so angry her skin is marked for life now over some stupid bullshit. This whole thing is just something I never expected to happen. I answered one of Jack's calls only to have him start a rant that he didn't recognize this person I had become, so I hung up on him. He was due to come back for the start of the work year, which I wasn't looking forward to, but I figured we could make it work as long as Trish was 12 hours away. No! Send him pictures of the actual scars on his daughter's face along with the divorce papers. Then at like 11 p.m. one night, I got very short and formal texts from father-in-law via Jack's phone saying Trish had come down with shingles and was in the emergency room. That Jack, <laughs> good, fucking good. God, that's probably such a shitty thing for me to say, but just fucking good. That Jack was staying there to care for her and that he could work from their house remotely once the year started back up. Jack's been there for the past few weeks, tending to mama's every whim. Bro, you have a fucking infant child. Like I get it. I get it, it's bad, she's your mom, whatever, but you don't need to stay with her. She has a husband who can, like, what the hell, bro? I'm sure she's put on an Oscar-worthy performance of having one foot in the grave, and according to Google, it should be any day now that her painful, crusty pustules go gently into that sweet night. Actually, guys, maybe I don't understand shingles. Are shingles like, can you die from shingles? Shingles is rarely life-threatening, but complications can lead to death in some cases. One in every 1,000 cases in adults over the age of 70 is fatal. How old is this bitch? She's 56. She's fine, dog. A few weeks ago, I was honestly so tired and overwhelmed and in disbelief that I didn't know what to do. Now I'm back at home with people who actually care about me, and I think I'm starting to realize how lucky I am to see the weird relationship with his mommy this early on. The fact that he cares more about Trish than his own daughter speaks volumes. When he eventually comes back, I think we'll have to have a serious talk about our future together. With divorce papers. I didn't even address this, but Tina Pesto said he locked your daughter in the car, holy shit, and assumed you wouldn't be able to get her out. I mean, that was why he locked her in to threaten you, holy shit. Good on you for dipping out of there after that. Whatever happens with your marriage moving forward, you seem to have your parenting priorities straight. Good luck, and I hope Annie feels better soon. Not to give him any justification, because I fucking hate him, but the way it was written, I could totally see him not thinking that the daughter was in the car, but, but either way, bro, the action was taken. Like, you locked that child in the car. That's on you. Oh my god, Skullbearer says you only get shingles if you've had chicken pox. The new vaccine prevents it. Rather ironic. I'd get divorce papers served before Mummy Dearest decides your daughter should become a brethren or join Scientology. I don't understand how anybody could like how this could happen to anybody and they could be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to stay with this person for what? There are so many better people out there who won't defend their mother for actively infecting your child and also won't lock their own child in the car. You could do so much better. It's just it's just <laughs> my husband cheated and gave me an STD while I'm currently pregnant. New update. Before we get into the last story, if you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos, hit that subscribe button. On top of that, if you're trying to dive deeper into our community, I highly recommend joining our Discord. Links to those are in the description. Feel free to tag me once you're in there. Original post July 28th, 2024. I'm currently eight weeks into my pregnancy. I had gone for a routine pap smear and STD screening. A few days later, I tested positive for gonorrhea. I had never cheated on my husband and never expected that he cheated on me. When I confronted him with the test results, he seemed genuinely shocked and insisted there had to be a mix up with the results. He swore up and down that he had been faithful and there was no way that it could be true. I insisted that he get tested. He agreed to do it and as the days passed, he admitted that he had met a woman online and had sex with her. He claimed it was a mistake and he couldn't answer why he did it. He said the woman meant nothing to him and it was a one-time thing. I'm disgusted and feel betrayed knowing that he put me at such risk. Our pregnancy was planned so we were actively trying before I got pregnant and had no regard for that. The thought of continuing the pregnancy while dealing with this betrayal is overwhelming. I'm considering having an abortion because the idea of bringing a child in the mix is crazy to me. I don't think I can ever forgive him. I feel like crap for thinking of having an abortion. I just can't see myself continuing this marriage and having a baby with him. And the beans. He like walked in front of me as I was reading. Look at the boy. It's the boy. Look at him. He does this all the time. Like whenever I'm just working or whatever, he just comes. He lays down on my mouse and he clicks stuff. I think the 
most wild part about this story is homeboy cheated on her with some random woman on the internet. Not justifying any type of cheating. If you're gonna cheat on somebody, it should be someone who like, you met them and at first you didn't want to address that there was a little bit of tension there and a little bit of attraction there. But as you guys spent more time, you know, you touched hands and there was a spark and like da 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 and it just one thing led to no bro you were on the internet and met some rando woman and went and fucked her don't get me wrong all cheating's bad but that type of cheating is the worst the threshold of like what it takes for them to cheat is just so low one of the commenters asked does the std risk the health of the baby this was also something i was wondering which op said it was caught early and i was treated me and the baby are safe okay i think that's the most important part i think that was the big question i had from this story but update july 30th 2024 two days Days after the original post. Finally decided to find out the truth about his affair. I figured out my husband's email password and discovered that he's been on dating sites for months. I also found a woman's name and email address from hotel bookings he forwarded to her. I googled her information, found out where she worked, and called her. When she picked up, I got scared and hung up, but she called back and we had a long conversation. She said that she didn't know he was married and kept apologizing. She told me that if my husband and I have been intimate in the past few weeks, I should get tested because he gave her an STD. I was shocked because I thought she had given it to him. She said he gaslighted her, making it seem like she got it from someone else. I told her he did the same thing to me. I didn't mention that I'm pregnant. She said she'd cut him off and is considering suing him over it. They met on Tinder and had been seeing each other for six months, although I initially thought she should have known he was married, but I believe her because my husband isn't on social media. He has an Insta- See? See? That's what- Here's the thing, chat. I get girls who are like, your social media is a red flag, which, okay, fair. I'm a creator. I make content. I be posting a lot. Girls are always like, oh, I need a man who never posts, who posts once a year. But that, that is just as sus, if not more, bro. Bro, say what you fucking will about my social media. But at least I would be transparent as fuck versus this guy. This guy was able to get away with his shit because he didn't have social media. He has an Insta account, but doesn't post pictures. She confirmed that they had sex multiple times, contradicting his claim that it was a one-time thing. She said they spent time in hotels until he felt comfortable inviting him to her apartment. We came to the conclusion that she was just one of the women he was involved with because he gave both of us an STD. Hearing all this made me sick knowing there were other women. I feel stupid for not realizing what was going on and probably wouldn't have found out if it wasn't for the STD results. My husband doesn't know what I've discovered or that I've spoken to her. This is incredibly tough. I'm heartbroken and conflicted about whether I should schedule an abortion, but finding this out is pushing me towards that decision. I'm curious about like how OOP feels about the abortion and stuff, so I feel like this relevant comment is important. I wish I didn't have to make this tough decision. I don't want to co-parent with him, but at the same time, I feel so bad about having an abortion. My fear is that it might be a big regret that I won't be able to get over. It's so frustrating because each decision is heartbreaking either way. Yo, this is so slimy. Someone asked, how did she not suspect he was married even though she has never been to his house or met his important friends and family in six months? OOP replied, she's actually met one of his close friends who's also married, which might mean that his friend is also having an affair. I don't know for sure, but if his friend is okay with meeting my husband's affair partner, my guess is he has an affair partner too. I'm pretty sure his wife, who is my friend, doesn't know about this. What the hell? Maybe someone in chat would know this better than I would, but I think that you would have good grounds and a good chance for being able to sue for full custody for your kid on the grounds of the fact he's a serial cheater and has been your entire marriage and also endangered the baby from said affairs getting an std and giving it to the mother while she was pregnant with said child i don't know maybe someone in chat can correct me because i know the law systems are fucked up and i know it's different based off of where you live but to me if i'm a judge and i'm hearing that shit i'm like say less dog fuck this husband you got full custody so the title of this update is torn and it was august 9th 2024 a little under two weeks from the original post and a little over a week from the first update i'm almost 10 weeks pregnant i've scheduled an abortion and i'm feeling so guilty about it my mind keeps changing should i have my baby i'm terrified that i'll regret it and feel terrible for terminating an innocent life i'm also anxious about the possibility of never being able to get pregnant again but then i think maybe i'm doing the right thing the thought of dealing with this man for the next 18 years is overwhelming We'd still be in each other's lives because we'd share a child. I'm just all over the place and I feel sick having to make this decision. We haven't spoke in weeks. He doesn't know I'm planning an abortion. Not sure if I'm doing the right thing by not letting him know about it. I filed for divorce and it feels like I'm dealing with two major losses at once. 
I'm so stressed and unsure how I'll survive this. If I have the abortion, I can one, move on with my life peacefully, two, cut all ties, three, avoid custody battles, four, never having to see or hear from him again, five, no longer dealing with his lies and deceit. If I keep the baby, this is from someone in my comments, thank you. One, him wanting to be there during your pregnancy. Two, him wanting to make decisions about your baby from the name to anything else you can think of. Three, his family and their opinions. Four, him wanting to be there during the birth. Five, him and his family trying to gaslight your child into believing you're a bad person and daddy is perfect. Six, him being your child's role model. Seven, having to ask for his permission to make decisions like traveling or where you live. Fuck guys, I forgot what number I'm on. I'm just gonna keep going. Your child having a stepmom and maybe step sibling who might not treat him well. Your child meeting multiple girlfriends. You being forced to let him take care of the child. He will be free to have a parenting style completely different than yours, and if he's immature and petty, he might do things the opposite way you like them to just piss you off. Dealing with his emotional, mental, and financial issues. Never knowing whether he's telling the truth or lying about all kinds of things. Did he feed the baby? Did he take care of his cold the way you told him to? Why did the child get hurt? Could you trust him to be sincere? Could you trust him to be honest if he makes a mistake that hurts your child, even if coming clean would help the child? Or will you hide it and lie the way he did with his cheating? Don't tell mommy we did this, you saw this, I told you this, you ate this. Him being nosy about your personal life, including when you start dating or get into a relationship or marry, I'm his father and I have a right to know who's the guy he's gonna live with and crap like that. You can be sure your romantic life would suffer if he behaves that way, not many good men want to get involved in that kind of situation. Him using the kid to manipulate you. Chat, I was kind of like, okay, like maybe it's better to have the kid because it seems like you really want him. But after seeing that fucking list, girl, yeet is the fetus. I'm sorry, I don't care what your beliefs are. That is not something you want to be tied to. That sounds like a terrible fucking life for the next at least 18 years of your life, if not probably more. And the final update, August 15th, 2024, had an abortion. I had an abortion yesterday and I'm not sure how to feel. It was a difficult decision, but I believed it was the right one. There was no way I could keep the baby under these circumstances. Now, I just feel numb. I haven't told him and we haven't spoken since. I left him after discovering he gave me an STD. I know that when he finds out, he'll likely try to paint me as the worst person. I'm not sure if he deserves to know the truth or should I just say I had a miscarriage? As much as lying would be the easiest thing right now, I'm more concerned about if in the long term, he finds out if it could bite you in the ass later. Also, if he's not going easy with the divorce, could lying or telling the truth help or hurt the divorce process? I'm just giving my opinions here. I don't think my opinions are maybe the most informed or whatever, but this is just like at the time of me reading this, what my gut feels. I am okay with changing it if I'm wrong. I think it's better to tell the truth. If he makes the divorce harder and you guys have to like go to court or whatever to figure this out, he could use the fact that you got an abortion and lied about it as leverage to like get better standing in the divorce. Versus if you tell the truth and it comes out, then I think your credibility is better because you're not labeled as a liar. I think they could get away with lying, but I also think, especially if the divorce goes poor and they're trying to find dirt on OP, this could absolutely come out and bite their ass in, in, in court or whatever. If you're looking for more messy Reddit stories, click the link at the top of the description or click one of the videos popping up on the screen right now. The members of our community love these videos and I'm sure you will too.